Hello, coming to you today on January 25th, 2011, from Mean Mini Volume Profile Day Trading, where we uh, you can go and find a complete free educational uh, program on how you can trade uh, intraday using volume. And uh, recently, uh, at the start of the new year, we've we've also began to introduce how to combine volume with other tools for trading the euro futures, which offer us a lot of great opportunities, more volatility, much bigger range and dollar potential every day than the E-mini, uh, S&P E-mini, which has uh, really, really cut back in volume and volatility uh, last year and uh, seems to be continuing with a lot of narrow range days. So we've explored the euro because, uh, as I found out in all of my trading last year, that uh, it's just a much better day trading market now. Now today, what I want to do, and, and you can go and look at these two videos that would be, before you are going to understand today, you probably have to go look at those. You're not going to get what, everything we're talking about. But I'm going to branch off even further today to consider something a lot of people are always interested in, the possibility of trading spot forex. Now, uh, I've, I've spoken in, in the earlier videos, there are a lot of advantages to trading the euro futures, but there are uh, a lot of guys out there that uh, want to trade. They always ask me, you know, $10,000 account, $5,000 account, whatever, which makes life a lot more difficult and uh, narrows your possibilities. Well, with the euro futures being 1250 a tick and uh, 10, uh, you know, 100 ticks uh, making $1,250, uh, that's you know, that's going to mean uh, they really would need a $10,000 account to trade one contract, but it, the euro can be pretty scary and have the extreme uh, volatility and big moves all the time, which is great for trading, but may not be the best thing for somebody who's trading on a shoestring budget. So I've been looking at the Forex to try to get over some of the biggest hurdles, and uh, some of the biggest hurdles are the, uh, the fact that every time you get in a trade, you're taking a big hit. It's basically, if it's a two-point spread, you know, if you're trading the euro specifically, we're not even considering things like uh, the euro yen or the pound yen where the spread might be six ticks or something, but a two-tick spread is still very significant, uh, you know, because it's like a $20 commission. So what I have done is come up with a way to use the techniques that we introduced in these first uh, four videos and to really explore for myself, my own hands-on, uh, you know, going right in there and testing it out uh, to see if it could be feasible to trade the spot forex if you're going to have a, a, a high probability of overcoming that significant disadvantage of paying way too much for commissions. Well, I'm, the way I look at it, the only way to do that is you have to take more of a, of a sort of a mi at least a mini swing trading perspective, where you're going to hold trades. Let's say you're gonna you're gonna always allow for at least a couple hours. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. I, I this is real uh, a new account over at the uh, I, I've only blurred out my account number, but uh, I tried GT. Forex, or a GFT, and I don't even know if they're the best or anything. I've done a lot of research on, on you know, I know they're one of the biggest, and I figure they're pretty safe. Uh, uh, you know, if if you want to give them, uh, you know, don't don't give them all your all your money. Any 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 forex account, of course, is not CFTC uh, backed. It's, it doesn't force them to make a segregated account, so. Uh, there is there's some risk there, but it may not be a huge risk. Uh, but I would still, you know, maybe uh, commit less than in futures. You know, it wouldn't matter. Fifty thousand, hundred thousand dollars is safe. It's segregated. If they blow out, you know, you're going to get your money. Uh, Forex, if if the company goes under totally uh, and your account's not segregated, you don't have a guarantee. But they have some safeguards in motion. So let's just. Let's just assume, you know, you're willing to take that risk, like all the millions of others who are trading spot for it. Uh, this, is, this is my, I just, uh, just started uh, first trade on the 18th, uh, and, uh, you know, so it's about five days of trading. Uh, today's Tuesday. 
so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. And, you know, I'm looking at basically about one trade a day, looking for an ideal setup, employing the techniques that we looked at on the last couple of videos. And uh, I'm finding it's really easy. It really works quite well because we're going to use a 30-minute chart. We're going we're gonna to use our, our eyeballing of good support resistance points for entry based on uh, where, where there was some rotation. This is an hour and a half here, keep in mind. So this pullback sure looked good to me. And uh, we're using our moving averages, and we're going to throw a little Fibonacci in and maybe like to see our trades timed with a stochastic. This is basic stuff. And you say, well, gee, you know, all this indicator, everybody uses indicators. People act like that's a big problem. The thing is, if everybody's using a stochastic and a MACD, everybody's seeing this when the stochastic is under 20. Everybody sees it's an uptrend because of those moving averages. This isn't something we have to shy away from or reinvent the wheel. This is a great thing, actually. So uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm just simply going in, looking for the direction on a 30-minute, looking for a pullback that is at good support using our same market profile logic all this rotation over here and then it broke down it went lower it broke back above this level so we're looking at market structure this level is, appears to be really solid and and uh, the trend is is you know reversed on this 30 minute it's the first pullback after getting new momentum MACD is very strong making new highs and uh, here we are with the MACD pulling back more into the zero range, and the stochastic uh, getting under 20. I'm in a nice little pocket of moving averages. I figure this is a sure thing trade. So I'm willing to put it on here around the close, and I just wanted to put up my, my actual trades and times so you could see I'm not just, you know, making something up here. So our first trade was, uh, let's see, that we're, that we're going to look at anyway. I, I took a couple of practice trades here, just basically. So it took me a while to figure out how to uh, do the, uh, how to read the numbers. They put an extra, extra decimal place on them, etc. I've been trading futures for 20 years, not spot forex. This is new to me. So anyway, uh, the, uh, uh, the first trade here, uh, we can check it all out. Uh, basically, these are GMT times, so I have to subtract six hours for Central. But uh, in other words, if it says I got in here at 107.50 a.m., then it's going to be, uh, let's see, something like uh, 7, 7.50 p.m. because it's, uh, it's 107.50, so I have to subtract six hours from 13, and that gives me uh, the uh, 7.50. So... Uh, that's my first trade. I put it on right here. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That was the exit. Uh, the exit was at 7.50. The entry was at 4, 4.16. So we, we can just, uh, this, is, this is how, you know, the Forex gives you this nice little accounting uh, right away and everything, if you can figure out how to translate the times. But 10.16 10, minus 6 is 4.16 p.m. So I got in actually after the close of the Merck in Chicago, because I'm looking at all my Ninja Trader charts where I've been day trading uh, shorter time frames and more scalping kind of orientation. And uh, now I'm going to get in and see if I can make something in, while I go to sleep or go, go out, you know, get exercise or eat dinner or whatever. So I just put this trade on here and I don't worry about it. Now, here's, here's the other thing that I'm doing. We can take advantage with the Forex, the spot Forex, in the fact that they offer split uh, any kind of contract size within a sort of a range. You can, you can trade uh, a full size, and that's going to be $1,000 for 100 ticks, uh, which is still less than the, the Merck, which is $1,250 for 100 ticks. The two markets move uh, virtually tick for tick, I've found, and there's uh, right now, with us getting closer to the end of the March contract, there's only about a difference of about 7 to 10 cents. But as far as the actual movement, it's tick for tick. Just uh, usually the 4X uh, is going to be six or seven ticks away from that, but they're both going to move in perfect lockstep. So 
I just look at all my stuff on the on Ninja Trader, which gives me a little more volume information because I have my Delta tools on Ninja Trader and my my market pro volume tools. But I can also just eyeball it here. This last little rotation before it fell off, I can take my market structure and see that they regained uh, this attempted break to the downside strongly with good surge momentum by using my indicators, etc., etc., etc. So. Here we go. It's a perfect setup. I got in around the 38% uh, area here on the Fibonacci retracement. So I just I gave them even the confirmation here, and I just got in. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to trade, I have been trading a half, which is $500, 400 ticks. And then I'm putting in my other uh, order, uh, like a scale underneath, at around, uh, depending on, on my chart and the Fibonacci readings and where I consider major support, I'm going to put my, what you can call, you can call it a safety net order or you can call it an average order. My belief in, in my experience of trading is if it, if it were to break real hard and go straight down here, chances are I'd get a rally somewhere up into the congestion uh, and, uh, and make profit uh, on the difference between the two contracts. So, uh, I'm, I'm basically I'm using a really conservative scale, but uh, most of the time because these uh, Fibonacci and volume confluences, along with moving average and with mo uh, indicator confirmation, are extremely high percentage. I'm getting well. I'm I'm 100% so far since I opened this account, but that's only uh, you'll see the the rest of the trades coming up. But at any rate, so the first trade, I took a conservative exit because I didn't like the way I, when I actually came in and looked at it, I, I just basically I come in every two, three hours and just glance at the screen. And it happened to be pulling back here. So I basically took a, a, a very kind of a wimpy conservative exit on my first sort of holding trade uh, at, at all this rotation. And, you know, obviously it would have been better to stay in. But it's 114.50, uh, so it's about 30 uh uh, I'm sorry, 20, 24 ticks or something, uh, getting in at the uh, 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 338.20, so let's just call it 338.2, getting out at 3404. I also got out because it was around the handle. You know, they can always sell off from the handle. So 22, uh, almost, uh, you know, in 9 tenths, so about 23 ticks, uh, 50 cents short of 115 bucks. So that's the first trade. Now, basically, I just came in uh, the next day for the next trade. So here we are the next day as uh, the market made new highs. It still looked excellent uh, technically, uh, looking at all my information. Uh, I had the, uh, that obviously now they've, they've substantiated the strength of this range uh, by after, after pulling back. Uh, which, you know, I was sort of looking at that to happen there, but uh, so I missed that potential profit. But uh, I didn't re-enter here because I'm not staying here trading all night. This is 1.30 in the morning. Uh, so I just, I'm, I just, I'm looking at trades like afternoon, evening, sometime, put it on and forget about it, either overnight or, or you know, four or five hours if it happens to pop right after I get in. But uh, basically, uh, I didn't... Uh, I didn't get in the next one because that's 7 in the morning. I'm already, you know, looking at day trading here. 